Welcome back. We're at Clinton Lake in Illinois doing some skipper training. The Clinton Lake Sailing Association hosts skipper training clinics, and at these clinics we'll race four one-lap races, and what we'll do is we'll pair up two skippers, and each sailor will take turns driving so that each sailor gets a chance to skipper two races. Most of the participants in this clinic are proficient in the front of the boat and proficient at doing their crew responsibilities, but want to get some tiller time. We also have skippers who are newer or are struggling to um, get to the next level and want to take their sailing to the next level. So this is a really fun clinic to do just that. We have coaches on our chase boats and some lucky participants have coaches on their boats. I want to give a quick shout out to Charles and Ken, some friendly thistle sailors who volunteered their time to help out with the training and to run the race committee boat. So thank you for that. These are practice races, so we encourage everyone to start on the line because there's really no harm in being over the line. So um, one thing we're going to see here is five of our nine boats start right on the line at the start. You're going to see the class flag come down, and you're going to see five of our nine boats right there on the line, which I love to see. So that made me happy. It was a great start to a great day. First thing that jumps out at me is Ricky Bobby, one of our coaches. We call him Ricky Bobby because he sails very fast is starting near the boat, and all the other newer skippers are bunched up down there at the pin. Before the start of the race from the race committee boat, I thought the wind looked better on the right. I see Ricky Bobby starting on the right side near the boat, and after the start, you can already tell that the boats on the right are getting a better pressure lift. You notice boat 4890 here gets a start that's about 20 seconds late, but they're going to end up in better pressure on the right side, and you'll see them at the windward mark uh, make a big comeback and pass most of those boats on the left. We're going to speed this up, and I'm looking inside people's boats, and I see people aren't sitting together necessarily. Some people are sitting back in the boat. Some people aren't using their tiller extension or at least putting the, holding the tiller extension in front of them, and um, certainly we need to work on some mechanics. But as we fast forward and get up to Ricky Bobby's boat, who's sailing with Paul, you'll notice how they're sitting together. They're sitting forward in the boat. Um, Ricky Bobby has a tiller extension in front of him and just looks really, really good all around. Also notice how they're heading towards darker water. That darker water means better wind. So I promise you, Ricky Bobby sees that. That's why he's going out there. If you saw in the video beforehand, I also noticed that there was pressure in front of the windward mark. So if he tacks back towards the mark, he should be getting into some really good wind and be in a very good situation heading into the mark. We also saw there were boats going pretty far left, and we'll see how that plays out for the boats that went on the left side. There were some shifts, so we're going to see how it works out relative to the wind versus the shifts and see if the right pays versus the left and it'll be interesting to see. Looks like the boats on the right are going to converge with the boats on the left right near the windward mark so they're both coming in at or near the ley line so the boats on the left are going to have to give way to the boats on the right. Richard in the blue boat makes a very smart and safe move and ducks the oncoming starboard boats. The other boat makes a bad move and commits a foul. The other boat here is about to tack in front of that starboard tacking boat and is going to tack within the three-boat length circle. The boat that tacks in the zone commits a foul because the boat that was on starboard tack was fetching the mark and is forced to sail above close hold. Even though it's only slightly, that's enough and a foul was committed. And then the fouling boat commits a crime against humanity by not rounding the mark and really messes up the race of that poor innocent boat on the outside. Let's take a look at this situation again if you're in a situation where you are going to have to tack within the zone and you wish you would have ducked, another alternative is to continue sailing and cross the oncoming boats and then tack over. What that does is going to leave that oncoming boat roomed around the mark without you committing a foul. Unfortunately, that is not what happened and a foul was committed. Thankfully, we're making those mistakes in the clinic and not at a regatta. Another way to avoid that situation altogether is to tack back to the starboard ley line early and stay away from that port ley line, and you'll never have to tack inside the zone. Earlier we mentioned that Richard and the blue boat made a smart and safe move by ducking the oncoming starboard boats. Unfortunately, Richard did not duck that final incoming boat on its stern and just is giving up a lot of space. It's great to see this congestion because there's so many coaching opportunities and observations in this video. I'm going to freeze it up right here. That was an action-packed mark rounding. Look how many boat lengths the fouling boat from our past example gave up by not turning down at the mark. 
The yellow boat is rounding the mark, but is nowhere close to the mark and is just giving up a lot of ground unnecessarily. Finally, the boat that was fouled earlier jived back onto port and into traffic and fouls an oncoming starboard tack boat. If you ever sail wide of the weather mark and want to jive back onto port, always look over your left shoulder and make sure you're not sailing into oncoming traffic. We're going to speed up the downwind leg here. You can see that some people get their spinnakers up better than others. Some people are sailing them and keeping them fuller than others. But we have videos for that. So what I remind everybody at these clinics to do is after you go out sailing, keep watching the videos even though you've seen them before because the videos will reinforce the good habits so that you don't develop bad habits. So keep periodically watching the videos, go out, get some practice, and then watch the videos some more, and it's going to do you a lot of good and help you get better quicker. I really like Dan and the yellow boat. I like the play here. I like his move. He's the leeward boat. He's the right-of-way boat coming up on a windward boat. That sailing down, not really keeping his spinnaker full. Rather than mess with that boat, he just jibes away. Even though he's the right-of-way boat, jibes away, just doesn't mess with that boat and gets away. Steers down a little bit too much there and crashes the sail, but is going to get the sail back full, and he's going to salvage a really good race by doing smart moves and keeping good boat speed. I really like that play there and just want to point that out. What we're looking for here is exactly what we're seeing. I like the pull height. I think the clues are even, even though I can't see the other clue. I'm looking at the leech, and I see the leech folding back and filling back up. The sail isn't crashing, and you can tell that Dan is easing the spinnaker sheet to let that luff fold over and then pulling it back in to fill it back up. That's the fastest way to sail these things, and that looks like what he's doing. It looks like he's doing it really well. So um, he's improved in that area, and it's showing, so it's really good to see it when our, our sailors are listening to our coaching and executing on the race course. The two boats behind Dan are duking it out. They're... They're scrapping with each other, and when two boats do that, they're going to sail a little slower, so they're dropping back and not really keeping up as good as they could could have been. But it's a short race, so so fighting for points is understandable in this situation. Otherwise, in a regatta, we like to separate and try and try and break away from people. Uh, Chris is trying to get the inside advantage here, but probably notices Richard and the blue boat on the outside is going to have the inside right of way. So. So everyone's going to have to give Richard and the blue boat room. So the two boats were scrapping it out and sailing slow, and that allowed Richard the opportunity to catch back up, get inside overlap, and now he's the inside boat. And now those two boats to the outside of the blue boat and Richard are going to have to give him mark room. This is a great mark rounding example. Dan and the yellow boat's clear ahead, but let's freeze this up and let's talk this through. The blue boat is the inside boat and is entitled to mark room. The blue boat is on the same tack as the other two boats, and since the blue boat's the windward boat, that means the windward boat must give way to a leeward boat, and therefore the blue boat's not the right-of-way boat. The leeward boat can pinch the blue boat down so that it can't take a wide tactical rounding and can try and take advantage of that by forcing the blue boat to sail around the mark a little wider in a bad way so that she is in the dirty air of the yellow boat, which just rounded ahead. And that's exactly what happened. So if that middle boat pinched the blue boat down on purpose, that was a really good move because the blue boat here can't take that wide tactical rounding and ends up in the dirty air of the yellow boat. And the other two boats behind do a little bit better job of getting into a little bit cleaner air and are able to maintain that. As for the blue boat, they're in the dirty air of the yellow boat and will start slipping further and further to the right, further and further down the ladder. So it looked like the blue boat was in good shape, but by the time they crossed the finish line, and it's half of a leg because the start-finish line is halfway up of a short course, the blue boat's going to lose three places because of their unfavorable position right here. You can see 897, that's Allen. He's doing a good job on pointing and keeping his boat speed. I uh, really like what I'm seeing there because he's staying in cleaner air, and he's holding his own and not, not slipping into the dirty air like the blue boat did, unfortunately. The yellow boat's holding its own on pointing with the boat in front, and so everyone's looking pretty good except for that blue boat, but they're in dirty air. They probably should have tacked away sooner but didn't and then got killed because they didn't. So um, they're going to lose three boats here, but everyone else is, just seems to be sailing pretty well and sailing pretty fast, and uh, we're going to approach the finish line and finish the race. I'm also really excited to see our back-of-the-pack sailors here in the pack and not too far back. And that's saying a lot because Jody has been busy with – family graduations in the first half of the season and is still dusting off some rust. And then we have our brand newbies in Bryce and Bree who shouldn't even be doing this well but are. And so we're super excited to see all these good things that we're seeing out here. Also excited to see that we have some opportunities for improvement. 
that we can easily identify and help people sail better and sail faster. We've jumped to just after the start of the first race. I had to change my drone battery, so I missed the start, unfortunately. But you can tell someone was over the line early OCS because the X flag is coming down. That boat closest to the race committee boat was the boat over, and they're probably a little frazzled. And if you watch that boat here, we're going to focus on it. You're going to watch it try and deal with the puff, and it's going to wobble uh, pretty significantly. And even though we just kind of caught it out of the corner of our eye, that's really slow. So the driver of that boat is going to want to work on that to make sure that they're smoother and that the boat isn't rocking because a rocking boat is slower, obviously. So that's one thing that driver can work on. What I'll do going forward is I'll make bigger and bigger jumps in the video so that the video isn't excessively long. Before we do that, we will highlight 897 here. Allen sailing really well. They're pointing. They're, I like their boat heel angle. They're nice and flat. Their, their sails pulled all the way in. Um, they're, they're hiking. He's using the tiller extension. I, I like everything that I'm seeing. Uh, they're, I wish they could be a little closer, and I wish he wasn't sitting so far back in the boat. But um, the tiller extension is, I think, behind his ear. Should be out in front, but overall he's sailing really well. A few mechanical changes there I think will help him in the long run. Um, you see the yellow boat here coming up. Um, didn't get as great a start as Alan, obviously, but is still sailing really well. I like the heel. I like how the sail's pulled in. Uh, they're doing a good job of, of keeping good boat speed and probably getting some good point. Uh, looking at the boat ahead, looks like they're uh, hanging with Alan in terms of pointing ability. So that's always, always good because Alan points the boat very well. We're heading back downwind. The leader does not have a spinnaker pole, or at least is not using one because the crew is not comfortable yet with spinnakers. So we're taking baby steps, which is okay. Also, the blue spinnaker there I just pointed out does not have the halyard raised all the way. And that happens sometimes. So if the spinnaker doesn't look right, something doesn't feel right, just do a quick double check of everything to make sure everything is in the right place. And when you do those checks, sometimes you'll notice that your spinnaker is not raised all the way, and it happens to the best of us sometimes. So uh, double checking that is a good thing to do. And if something isn't right, just, just double check to make sure everything looks like it's in the right place. We have our newer skippers here, Bob on the left, and the blue boat is brand new. We have Muhammad on the right. He's very new, and they're both keeping up and doing a good job. I like the look of that yellow spinnaker, not just because it's mine, but because I think they're doing a good job. You can see that they're easing the sheet out and that it's folding over, and so they're doing a good job of working the trim. Let's jump to the lured mark rounding. You'll see some boats have already rounded. The blue boat's going to round, and we also have another boat that's rounding way wide. I want to recommend that we always try, when we round the leeward mark, to be able to almost kiss the leeward mark with our bow. And you can see how much lost ground there is. So if you're turning up into the wind and your bow isn't at the leeward mark, you're giving up distance and giving up boat lengths. And here there's just a giant amount of lost distance. So the driver of this boat, we want to make sure that they work on that exercise. Let's jump to the start of race three. Feels like deja vu because it looks almost identical to the start of race number one. We have the same three people who are fighting over the pin, and then we have our two most experienced racers starting by the boat. To me, it felt like the right side was better all day long, and so we have people fighting over the left. And let's see how it turns out in this race. Looks like the boat at the pin was over early. The X flag's going up and the horn is sounding. I don't think they're coming back, but I'm actually glad that people are, are over the line early in these practice races. I want people to be more aggressive and get used to starting at the line. And you're allowed to make mistakes and you're allowed to be too aggressive in practice races, and I actually encourage it. Now in the regattas, you definitely want to start on the right side of the line, but I like what I'm seeing here. I also noticed that it seems like the right side seems to be working really well and the boats are pointing well. And it looks like, yeah, it just looks like there's darker water over on the right. It looks like the there's there's a hole over there on the left. So, um, yeah, it really looks that way just looking at the wind right now. So let's see how it plays out. As the boats on the left turn back towards the middle, you can see that the boat on the right is way ahead and crossing way ahead in some better pressure. And I think at this point it's safe to say that the wind on the right has been favorable all day. So I would think that we want to start looking on the right side and start paying attention to the wind and, and probably only go left unless we see something that we like over there. So um, just, just the pattern here. So I would say that's rather notable that the wind has been pretty steady and consistent all day long in the same places. 
Jody sailing with Muhammad. I think their spinnaker looks pretty good. I think maybe the pole can come up just a little bit. The the clue may, on the right maybe just a little bit and just a little bit. Um, spinnaker on the left looks nice and full and good. Looks like the boat speed's moving a little better, but it's also sailing a little hotter angle as Jody sailing down. So now we're going to jump to the fourth start of the day, and it's a bad start unless you're that boat in the yellow because the yellow boat sailed by Dan is the only boat that's on the start line at the time of the gun. So um, not the way we want to end the day from a starting perspective, but, you know, these things happen. So we'll just try and make sure we do better next time. But the yellow boat is heading left and did not tack over everybody and head off to the right. The wind has been very good on the right all day long, and the right has paid time and time again, at least in race after race. But the question is, is going the left side going to pay this time, or is there going to be a big lull that people on the left have to sail through to get back over to the right? So we will see if it's different this time, or we'll see if it's the same. So I'm really interested to see how this plays out. I can't really tell yet how it's shaping up, but we'll find out when the yellow boat tacks back and see which side was better to be on. So yeah, it looks like yellow boat's tacking back, and you can see that the boat just to the right is pointing better than the yellow boat by about 20 degrees, it feels like. It's significant, and they're just coming out of a big hole, and all the boats on the right look like they're far ahead, and you can just tell the boat on the right is pointing better than the yellow boat. And so um, as they converge, I, the, the yellow boat, he's hiking out in light wind, um, sailing slow, the it's just tough sailing when you when you come out of a hole like that and trying to get some speed because just a little bit more speed can mean a little bit more point. And so 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 right here, um, the yellow boat it just looks like it's it's way too flat. I think maybe an adjustment to to lure to help get a little bit of speed, ease the sails of to get some speed and adjust a little bit better. You notice that the people on the other boat are sitting on the leeward side and trying to get it to heel a little bit more. And right there. Uh, the crew on the yellow boat goes to the low side and the skipper stands up, but I think it's too little too late there. The adjustment probably should have happened 100 yards or 200 yards before that to help heal the boat more to leeward in this light wind situation with the lull. You look ahead, you see the boat on the right way far ahead. It's played the right side, a little bit better pressure over there. Um, not as good wind as we had earlier in the day, but um, still the right side seems to be a little bit better than the left, and it's just been consistent in all four races. Let's speed it up so we can see how this plays out. The yellow boat won the start by a mile, except sailed into a hole on the left side. And we're seeing how big of a difference that can make in the race because the yellow boat's going to come back, and when it converges with the boats on the right, is going to be way in the back of the pack. The ability to see the wind and find the wind is something that comes with experience, and it's going to take time to develop that ability. What you can do is you can pay attention to what people are doing and not doing. You can pay attention to what's working and what's not working. And if something is working well consistently throughout the day, you probably want to try that unless there's a good reason not to. Now, what the question I want to ask the people who went to the left is, did you see something over there? Did you have a reason to go over there? Otherwise, I would say, why didn't you try the right? Because it's been working all day for everybody else. I'm excited to point out some brand newbie sailors who are doing a great job, Bryce and Bree. They've only been out four or five times. They're working hard. They're with the pack. They're doing great. But before each of these clinics, we asked the participants what they want to work on. And Bryce specifically wanted to do lured mark roundings correctly and asked how to get oriented. And we talked, and the strategy for him was to make sure that they had their weight in the right position as they rounded, which they did. They had their weight on the windward side, which helped push the boat down. And then point your bow right at the mark and then and then work on getting some boat speed after that. So they're with the pack. They're doing those things. So it was really great to see them doing exactly what was taught to them and keeping up with the pack and doing a phenomenal job. So that's really cool to see. The drone batteries are about to run out, so I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank the participants for sailing in this clinic. I want to thank the race committee volunteers for helping out. There are hundreds and hundreds of observations that one can make in clinics like this. The experience that people get and the tiller time that people get is fantastic and hugely helpful towards their development. If you see something that you think is worthwhile to share, feel free to say so in the comments. Thanks again, and we'll see you at the next one.